All right, so what is up guys? I've already showed you on my channel how we can create a bottom navigation view, but in this video I want to go over how to create a custom bottom navigation view. That means you'll have nice icons and they will change when you click on them. So you can actually have this very nice effect. You might have recognized it from Spotify. They have something similar. And I also want to add to this app the small notification bubbles down here. And as you can see here, it pops up three seconds after the app starts. And that's just to simulate that someone got a notification or something. And when you click on it, the notification disappears because of course they will deal with their own notifications there. And the same thing goes for the heart. And yeah, this is gonna be using fragments and it's gonna be exactly the same layout as the previous bottom navigation bar. But uh, with the exception, we are going to use a lot of XML and a lot of drawables to edit this bottom navigation bar. But let's get started immediately by closing this window and going to our build.gradle file where we will paste in the material design dependency. So this one here, material material 1.1.0 and we click on sync now. That's always the first step for this bottom navigation bar. And then we can close that once the sync has been successfully synced. And up next we are going to go to styles. So we're gonna to go to values, styles, and inside here we are going to have to change this theme to the material components theme because that's the only way to get the small notification bubbles to show up. It requires you use this material components theme. So I'm gonna write material components dot light dot no action bar. And that's also gonna get rid of that action bar at the top, but you don't have to add this if you don't want to. Next, I'm just gonna edit these colors. The first one, actually we can just go to colors to do that. So the first one we have to edit the top one to a, I'm gonna put in what I had earlier, which is 272727, and it's gonna put it to a darker gray down there. Then for the color primary dark, I'm gonna have it on a complete black. And finally, for this light color down here, we are going to pick this material design red, and those are gonna be my choice of colors. You can pick whatever colors you want. And now we are going to start with the long process of creating those drawables. So we want to create six drawables in total. One's gonna to be for the icon when it is inactive and when the icon is active. So in the inactive state, you'll see it's dark gray with an outline. And when you actually click on the icon, it changes to a full solid icon. So I'm gonna right click on drawable. I'm gonna to go to new and we're gonna click on vector asset. And inside here, First thing we want to do is change this to white and we're gonna go FFFFF, which is just white. And we want to pick an icon, which is gonna be the home icon. So the first one is gonna be a solid one. We're gonna click next, finish. And then we're gonna go and create another vector asset. And in here, we will type in home again, except this time you'll see there's this drop down box that allows you to pick different kinds. You can click outlines, you can make it round whatever you want. So we're gonna go for outlines to keep things simple and we're gonna click on next and then we're gonna click on finish. And now I'm gonna show you the second step and then I'm gonna just copy and paste in my other icons to save time. But the second step now is to actually create a new drawable resource file and this is gonna be a selector. So what we're gonna do is type in home icon and we will click on okay. And then inside here, we are going to create the animated state of when the button is checked and when it is not checked. So the first thing we want to do is create an item of Android drawable at drawable baseline home for the first one. And this is gonna be if the state is checked and that's gonna be set on true. Let me make this a bit smaller so we can see everything. And we can put a slash and close that. Then you can just copy and paste this line right below to save maybe one second. And down here we can do IC outline and the state checked is gonna be put to false. So when it's not checked, you'll have this nice outline and when it is checked, you will have the house, of course. And that is essentially all you need to do for the icon. And you're gonna do the same thing for the other two icons. And I'm just gonna copy and paste in my other two icons. We'll copy and we'll put this in here. So yeah, I copied and pasted in two more of these icons that I showed you earlier. One is for the heart and one's for the settings. As you can see, one is an outline and one is just a full solid icon. And finally, there's one more step in the drawable that we have to go through, and that is creating the different color states. So we're gonna go to drawable resource file, we're gonna create nav item color selected. And we're gonna create two items. The first item is gonna be the selected color, so we're gonna go 
item Android collar, and that's gonna equal hashtag FFFFF, which just stands for white. And we're gonna take an Android state checked to true. And autocomplete won't really want to help you out with this because it's kind of confused, but that's okay. Just type it in and make sure everything makes sense. And for the second one, we're gonna do Android collar and it's gonna be a slight gray. I'm just gonna copy in the hex from the previous code, which is F828282. And that's gonna make this uh, middle light gray. And we have to change this to false, of course. And that's all we have to do for the drawable file. You'll see later when we create the navigation bar how to use this different color selector. And uh, yeah, let's just go to our REST file and now we have to create a menu. So we're gonna go Android resource file. We're gonna type in bottom nav menu. And this is gonna be, this is gonna be a resource type of menu and we're gonna click on okay. So that's gonna create the folder for us and it's gonna create the bottom nav menu for us. And inside here, we want to create three menu items. So the first one's gonna be item ID nav underscore home with the icon being the home icon, the one we created. So it's gonna be at drawable home icon. And right under, we should specify title and it's gonna be title of home. And we can close that. And you're gonna to want to do the same thing for the other three items. So we will just copy and paste that three times and make sure to change everything correctly. So the second one is gonna be nav underscore favorites. And the final one is gonna be nav underscore settings. Then we need to change the icons. I always forget this. And what I forgot to do actually is to create the other two icons in my drawable folder. So I'm gonna paste these in. And just so you guys don't get confused, I did exactly what I did for the home icon here. So as you can see, I created two items. One is with the state checked of a solid and one is with the state not checked. And that is of an outline. So the same thing goes for the heart icon and the same thing goes for the settings icon. But back to the bottom nav underscore menu, we are going to insert those icons. One's gonna be the settings, the other one's gonna be the favorites, or I just wrote hearts for some reason. And here we're gonna write favorites. And right down here, we're gonna write settings. And that will take care of everything we need to do in our bottom underscore nav underscore menu file. And next we can go and create the XML files. So we can actually get started in the layout activity underscore main. And we can go to split view. And the first thing we want to do in here is change this to a relative layout. And we can just remove this text view altogether. Inside here, we are going to create a frame layout and it's gonna be of match parent and match parent. We're gonna give it an ID of frame layout wrapper and it's gonna be right above the bottom navigation bar we're about to create. So we're gonna write layout underscore above ID and we're gonna create something called bottom underscore navigation. So don't worry if this is red, we'll fix it immediately right under. And down here we want to type in bottom navigation view. This one right here that says android.material.bottomnavigation.bottomnavigation view. And we're gonna do match parent for the width and 50 dp for the height. Then we're gonna give it an ID of bottom navigation. So that error will go away. And we want to make sure it's on the bottom. So we will write align parent bottom and set that to true. And then we should add a background. So Android background, and we're gonna start with this question mark, Android ATTR window background. And under that, we're gonna write item background, which is gonna be our color primary. So we'll do color primary. And under there, we can do item icon tint. And we're gonna insert our at drawable slash, and we're gonna to want to open this up a bit because we are gonna copy what we wrote down here, nav item color selected, item underscore color underscore selected. And then right below that, we're gonna turn label visibility off so we don't have any labels. You can actually decide whether you want it to be labeled or not, but for the purposes of this example, I will take it off. And of course, we need to attach the menu. So we're gonna do app menu and we're gonna write at menu bottom underscore nav menu. So you can see it finally appeared at the bottom in case you were wondering where that was going. And in case you want to include text caller, be sure to write text caller, item text caller, and I'm just gonna do at Android caller white to keep things simple. And then we can add a closing slash, and we can just control all and control alt plus L to format the code in a nice way. Then we have to go to our layout file and create three more XML files. It's gonna be one for each of our fragments. 
and we will click here. So the first one we'll create is fragment underscore home and we'll click on OK. And inside here, we just want to create a frame layout. So we'll change this to a frame layout. So here we created a frame layout and right under I'm just going to copy and paste in what I had earlier. So as you can see here, I had a relative layout, which is matching the parents. And then I put an image view inside with the ID of IV home. And then I used the image that I created earlier for our icon, the IC baseline home 24. I made the width and height to 200 DP and I sent it in parent and I gave it a text of home, which is actually not necessary. And I forgot to do one thing, which is in the frame layout, you want to type in background and then we can just go hashtag FFF. So we can get this color palette and pick a color. So I'm just going to pick red and put it a bit higher. So it's a bit light around there. So we can see that it is a home image and you want to do this for the other two, exactly the same thing as here. And I'm going to copy and paste what I had earlier. So it's going to be fragment favorites and fragment settings. So let's just put that in there and click OK. So you will have one that says fragment settings and I'll show you what I did in here. We can just delete this tools of context and you will see that essentially we have another frame layout. I have another relative layout inside. We can get rid of this text of settings, but uh, you just need to create an image view with an ID of IV underscore settings and add the drawable of the baseline settings there with the width and height to 200 DP. And the exact same goes for the favorites. So once we've created those three XMLs for our fragments, we can actually go ahead and create a folder for the fragments. So we are going to go to package and we're going to type in fragments and inside fragments, we can create a new Kotlin file class and we're going to call the first one, the home fragment. So inside here, we're going to write class home fragment, and it's going to extend fragment. And then inside here, we need to call on create view. And for the view that it returns, we actually want to get rid of this and write equals inflator dot inflate r dot layout dot frag. At first, we have to import r home and it's going to take a container and attached to root will be false. So that will inflate our fragment home. XML into this fragment, which is the home fragment. It will be the first one you see when you open the app. And if you want to add some functionality to this fragment, you just write on view created. And inside here, you can attach something to your home icon if you want. Set an on click listener. And then you just write toast. We're just going to write context. And it'll say you clicked on the home image. And then we can just copy and paste that fragment. So we're going to go and change this one to the favorites fragment and click on OK. We'll actually just get rid of this toast altogether to keep this uh, to keep the other two more simple, but you can always add whatever functionality you want there. And it's going to be fragment favorites. And then we're going to copy and paste this favorites fragment and we're going to rename it to settings fragment. And we are going to click on OK. And we just have to change this to fragment settings. And after having created those fragments and those fragment XMLs, we can go to our main activity and finally get started with the functionality of this bottom navigation bar menu. So the first thing we're going to do here is create a value of tag and this is going to be for logging. So we're just going to write main activity and inside here we want to instantiate our home fragment, our settings fragment and our favorite fragment. So we're going to write val home fragment is going to equal home fragment. Then we're going to write value favorites fragment is going to equal favorites fragment. And finally, we're going to do the same thing for settings. So val settings fragment is going to equal settings fragment. And next we want to create a function that sets the current fragment just to save time. So we'll go down here, we'll write private function set current fragment, and it's going to take the fragment as an argument. And that's going to equal support fragment manager dot begin transaction and we're going to write dot apply and inside here we can write replace and it's going to take r dot id dot fl wrapper with the fragment of our choice and be sure to call commit so that is a very quick function we created that's going to save us a lot of time when we create our selector and uh, yeah let's create the selector now so right under the fragments we've instantiated we are going to write bottom navigation and we're going to write set 
on navigation item selected listener. And inside here we can do when it dot item ID is equal to r dot ID nav home, which comes from our menu resource file. We are going to set the current fragment. Uh, first, let's turn this into a block so we have more room. And I put that arrow the wrong way, silly me. So we're gonna write set current fragment and that's gonna take our home fragments. And below we will add a log that says first tag and then home selected. And to avoid all this nonsense with the error, we are going to write true at the bottom just to get rid of that immediately. And then we're gonna copy and paste this three times. So it's gonna be here and here. And we're gonna change this to nav favorites and nav settings. Then of course we need to change this to favorites fragment and settings fragment. Plus we need to change the log favorites selected settings selected. And to get started, that should be all you need to create this custom navigation bar. But uh, let's just test it out real quick to make sure everything is working. Ah, so I forgot a few things. The first thing we want to do actually when we create all of this is set the current fragment because when I started the app, none of them were selected and that's why we had an empty frame. So I'm gonna do set current fragment to whatever fragment you want to start off with. And now we're gonna to go to our fragments favorites because the color of this heart was not the color I anticipated. And now I remember why I had it red earlier. So we'll just change this to red or this red over here. So now when we click on play again, you will see that it starts on the home fragment. And when you click on the favorite, you'll see this red heart. And when you click on the settings fragment, you will see the settings fragment pop up. And if you click on the home, it will create that text and you can add whatever functionality you want in the fragments. And finally, I'm gonna show you the bonus part where you can add small notification icons to each one of these icons. And to do that, let's go back to our main activity real quick. And we're gonna create two new functions. One's gonna be called badge setup and one's gonna be called badge clear. So right down here, we're gonna go first for private function badge setup and it's going to take an id of type int and the amount of alerts you want of type int and the first thing we're going to create is a value named badge and it's going to take our bottom navigation and we're going to use the method get or create badge and it's going to take the id and then under we're going to write badge is visible and we're going to set that to true and we are going to get the badge dot number and we're going to equal that to the amount of alerts and right under that, we're going to write private function badge clear. And this is for when they tap on the icon, we can just make the badges go away. And that's going to make things look very nice for the user. So they don't have to always look at these random notifications. So we do id int and we will write val badge drawable equals bottom navigation dot get badge. And we're going to insert the id. Then under we can write if badge drawable is not equal to null then we want to set the badge drawable is visible to false and we want to clear the number so we'll do badge drawable dot clear number now we're going to go up to our on create method and right after we've created all of these values and we've set the current fragment to home we are going to go right under that and we're going to create a handler which is going to delay the notifications and that's just for and that's just for the purpose of this video in case you have real time updates you won't need this but just to pretend as if you get some notifications as you log into the app is great so i'm going to write badge setup and we are going to take the r.id of nav settings and we want let's say seven alerts to show up and we will let that happen after two seconds and also when they log in we will write badge setup and we are going to set r.id.nav favorites and we're gonna put in, let's say, 500 alerts for their favorites. And of course, we need to call badge clear on each one of these so that when you select one or another, it will clear the icons. So we're gonna write badge clear and we're gonna write r.id.nav home. And you want to do this for each one in case you have icons on each one. Home is never going to have icons because I didn't set up any icons for home. But uh, in a real app, you might have some notifications on your homepage. 
So you never know. Nav underscore favorites. And finally, badge clear nav underscore settings. And now when we click on play, you'll see that you have 500 notifications on the favorites and you have seven that showed up two seconds later on the settings. And when you click on them, they will disappear. And let's pretend you have 10, uh, let's pretend you have 20,000 alerts on your favorites. I believe it will max out at plus 999. So everything's handled, everything looks great, and you should just concentrate on making this look even better. But I just gave you the basic tools on how to customize it and how to create it. But with that being said, thanks for watching this video. If there's anything else you would like me to go over, please leave it in the comment section below. And if this video was of any use to you, please consider leaving a like. Otherwise, uh, thanks again for watching and I will see you in another video.